Because uh, I always get, um, it's always quite interesting for me when people ask me for a bio because I'm like, you know, in this world, the one thing that I'm quite keen for is that we really help people understand that it's who you are, not what you are that matters. So that's why I was very specific in, in sending some of the things that are quite important to me and how people receive me so that you could also receive me in a light-hearted manner. And not be like, oh, this is so gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't psychoanalyze unless you pay me. <laughs> All right, that's my ethic. But this evening, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's extended the invitation. This is a very, very important conversation that we're not having enough. And I think one of the things that become quite important with the speakers that have spoken is that the beauty of being in one accord is that everything just comes together. And some of the things that they have spoken about are quite important for us to note. The first thing is look around you. I just want you to look around you. All the way to the back. This condition is the condition we have out there when it comes to mental health. How many people actually seek out knowledge is this representation. Beyond access is whether one person is actually yearning for um, the kind of knowledge that it takes to know much about your mental health. So what we see here is a sense of, if we went outside, we would see where the young people are. Yeah? We would see what they prefer as a means of reconciling with themselves at the end of a week. And it's not this. Right? So we find the same issue when it comes to thinking about mental health, even in the spaces that are safe spaces, is that the uptake, even though the, the body, the institution is ready, there's a lot of resistance amongst the people that are meant to listen and to hear it out. Right? COVID did a number on us. Um, the introduction of convenience was the loss to the church because then the aspects of fellowship started to feel like eh, maybe once in a while I'll pop in, I prefer online, nothing wrong with that. But there's something about the gathering that equips one's faith and sharpens one's character. So the three things that I want to kind of speak on, and you know, others have spoken about it, so I won't spend too long. I heard there's a timer, but there we go. Great, uh, three things, and then I'll make biblical reference because, hey, Abayama's a learner will feel like, ah. <laughs> they didn't even expand on the word. <laughs> this was not enough, they didn't even know the word. No, 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 no. Okay, so three things that I want you to take away with in terms of what it means to start to think about spirituality and mental health is assurance, persistence, and endurance. Those three things. Simple. And the first thing is, when we're thinking about the assurance, is that many times we've made mental illness, which I liked when you said mental fitness, is so much different, and we make that assumption that it is the absence of illness. Right? Many of us take on our mental conditions as identity. I am experiencing anxiety is different from I have anxiety. Very, very different. One is the normalcy of being alive. Yeah. Two is owning it as part of who you are. Right? So when we're thinking about the assurance, that's where we start in the word. Right? The word becomes kind of the, the manual of all things. All things are found in the word. If you spend enough time, you realize, no oh, man, indeed nothing is new under the sun. So the first thing is, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Someone say, I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Say it again so you believe it. I have a sound mind. Perfect. So the understanding from the word is that these spirits and principalities are there. It's not the absence of it. The fear and the anxiety... The word is not saying, 
that don't want to know. It doesn't exist and therefore it is your own condition and your own unresolved. Yeah. It is just saying that in the presence of all things, you have been given power, love and sound mind. So you have to then ask yourself, in which ways do I disempower myself in the way that I speak and the way that I think? In which ways do I repel love in the way that I consider myself and my worth? In which ways am I challenged and confused because I would rather think of the worst outcomes than what's the best that could happen? Because that's, that's the condition of having a sound mind, is sitting and thinking, all things considered, what's the best that could happen? And I ask this often of clients in therapy, where they've kind of told me their last story, they're going on about it, and I'm like, okay, great. Three things. What's the best that could happen if you just put aside the doubt, the insecurity, the uncertainty? And I promise you, it's always homework. Because people sit there and they're like, I have no idea. What's the best that could happen? Because we're so keen to rehearse all the aspects of grief and loss and heaviness. We spend, we give it so much air time that when you're thinking about speaking things confidently, you're like, but you have to kind of like leave some room for disappointment, leave some room for... We're not saying that you won't be disappointed, but we're saying how do you position yourself in this lifetime? Because really that matters the most. Right? Speak things into existence. Have assurance. Write things down. I came across a journal entry uh, a while ago of some things that I wrote in 2019. And I was so stunned. I was like, God, the plans that you have for one. I knew what was laid in my heart, but God was like, okay, bet. I'm going to do the exceeding and the abundant. Right? So if you don't put it out there, you can't receive it back. Right? So very, very important in terms of the condition of your mind. Anything and everything is going to be easier if you really step into and I have been given the spirit and the condition of power of love and of the sound mind. So that is our assurance in all things. Persistence. Dr. Ndaba spoke of um, Philippians 4 verse 6, and I want to reiterate it this evening. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your requests known to God. By prayer and petition, not the Mercury retrograde, not the star sign, not the chakra, not, not the I'm a chakra hand, I'm a chakra <laughs> By prayer and by petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will stand guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When it comes to our understanding of our life, the most important thing is that, one, the heart is deceitful above all things. That's what the Bible says. But equally, it says, guard your heart above all else. For life flows out of it. So the heart plays two roles. On one part, it may just take you out. On the other, it is the thing that you have the opportunity to be the best steward of, if you give yourself a chance. So if, when we think about the persistence, it's that understanding, and I always say, I'm so glad that I got salvation so early in my life. Hey, hey, because I could. We've been at it, right? Um, I started ministry, not just being the church, ministry at the age of seven. So I've been at it for a lot of summers, basically, right? But the one thing that I'm so glad I received in my youth and that I held on to so much and that I want to pass on to you this evening is no matter what, do not confess what is contrary to the word. No matter what, 
Never ever allow yourself to confess what is contrary to the word. If you don't know, if you're crying, if you're weak, if you're laden, open your word, open your Bible. Say, Lord, I am unborn. It's just, but I will not speak anything contrary to your word. Remember, God says, I have placed my word above my name. Do you know what that means for him? All knowing, all sufficient. To place the word above his name. It means I am equally bound to what I have spoken. I too, as God Almighty, are equally bound to what I have spoken. Therefore, if you do not utter anything contrary, I promise you, you are walking in alignment whether you see it or not. You have to trust that the word says this about who I am. Right? God says I am that I am. But the same is said to you to be like you also can step into that abundance of really trusting that you are more than empowered in his word. So that's persistence. And then the third is endurance. And in Isaiah 40 verse 31, it says, but those who wait on the Lord will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not be faint. I'm old enough to know the song, teach me Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Mm. I mean, I just like, hey. Yeah, I know, because it's a man of my family. My youth camp. You will not teach me, Lord, to wait. Um, so endurance becomes very, very important. What do you do in the waiting? Because it's one thing for us to say, but those that wait on the Lord, but what do you do as you wait? Now, we're all running a race in our lifetime. And one of the things that I kind of appreciate about sportsmen is that whenever they begin, they have an end in mind. They're very set on, on the goal that is ahead of them. So when they are running, when they are building up that mental endurance, they've already thought of the end. They've already rehearsed the track. Someone has already sat and thought of the court. What, am I, what do I expect? There's a sense of being able to sit and prepare the mind for what is about to happen. But for some of us, we begin our race without instruction. We're very impulsive. God says, wait, you're like, no, 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 we'll decide along the track. Let's go. And he's like, okay, cool. I won't hold you against your own will, but I'll st you'll still find me at the starting point. So you can go, that's for sure. But you'll still find me here waiting for you to come and yield to my purpose for your life. Right? So very important for you to wait on the Lord. They spoke about relationships. They spoke about marriage. I'm not going to. I'm telling you now. <laughs> it's not easy. Because you're like counting down, you're like, mm, 25, 30. And God is like, Shop, you find me at the starting line. <laughs> because I alone, he's very specific. I alone know. I alone know the plans I have for you. So if you don't go to God, who is supposed to build your endurance, who is supposed to renew your strength, who is supposed to ensure that he can carry you as you run and as you walk, then you find yourself coming back to begin so many times and there's nothing to show for it. Right? So the waiting requires obedience. Some of us dated early in our lives, things ended. And like Dr. Dava said, we thought we were ending with them. <laughs> we were like, I oh, God, why? <laughs> and the one thing that I learned in, in my um, walk with God is that God taught me a very hard lesson 
that you professed covenant without me. That's why you passed begin again so many times. So that's why I was suffering. Because I said, this is the man I would marry. God is like, oh wow, love this. I was timber girl, wish I covenant in it. <laughs> so, okay, all the best, you know? So I then learned to say, mm, I need to do it the right way around. I need to go to God, who is the author of all things, and I need to say, Lord, is this what you would desire for me? And I need to have an intuitive sense to what that means, right? And sometimes, you know, someone said on social media, if there's one thing that... <coughs> God will do is he will respond in five business days to is this one the one? <laughs> At the end of the week you will know if he is the one or not. But even when this is revealed to us, we're like, no man, uh -uh, let's discuss. <laughs> let's discuss. Um, so, I mean, I see a lot of couples in the work that I do and you can tell the ones who Said to God, let's discuss. <laughs> because they keep passing the game, right? And nothing's changing. So, in that endurance, what do you do in the wait is that you really seek deeply for that which God desires for you. Not what your friends desire, not what society says you should lean into, but really what God desires for you. And here's the thing about faith and our walk with God is that there is a place for us to commune, but there is a place where you must go yonder. Go with God alone. Know Him for who He is. He's very specific in saying, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling, so that you don't peg it on somebody else. You know? Abuna Siwana is when I want to go to Akhi, not with what anyone else does besides you. So some of the distress that we're finding in society is that we lean a lot into comparison, which is the thief of joy. So when you're coming into this institution, you have your own track, right? Many of us have ceased being on the track and the race of life because it doesn't look like the other person's lane, pace race and we fall for it so many times and if you don't learn the art of much which is given to me that which is given to me is mine and that whatever that i have and the abundance of it can be enjoyed by others but once i start looking to the left and to my right then i've missed the mark so it becomes quite important to think about these three things when we're thinking about spirituality and mental health. And quite important in the endurance is also that you need the fellowship of others. Iron sharpens iron. Right? But the thing is, for some of us, we are in the council of wood, plastic, glass. Have you seen that meme where the cow and the dolphin are like jumping over a water wave. There's like a meme that was like when you and your best friend are not aligned, but you're going to make it work. <laughs> right? And then that's the thing about who is the counsel that you keep. God is very specific about counsel because he has an understanding and an appreciation of the corporate anointing of gathering. Very important for us, we, you know, when it comes to being sold out for Christ, um, there was this appreciation of, no, I will go with them. I will come close to the fire. But, you know, I will not be consumed by that fire. But if you sit long enough, you start to get warm by that fire. So it just becomes very important for us to really be cognizant of the company that we keep. And to continue in our journey of spirituality and mental health is to be able to have an appreciation of 
receiving the help that we need, right? When people come to therapy, the first thing when I ask them, what are their best hopes, is that they would like to find healing, right? And I always create, I mean, correct that by saying when you come into a space that can transform your life, seek insight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you're coming for healing, I am now the authority of whatever that you're going through. Because you're coming to me for healing. But if you're coming for insight, you have the capacity to be empowered to go and exercise healing beyond the room. If you come to church and you're coming for healing, great. But how many of us have fallen prey to people who use power to engage the darkness? How many young people have been grieved by the church because they sought healing when they needed to seek insight? The work is yours to do. The journey is yours to to embrace, the race is yours to run. So that's my input in terms of just thinking through how we navigate spirituality and mental health. And we must have an appreciation that for many things, there is diversity to thinking. Do not be opposed to that. You know, Be open to hearing what the circular has to say about mental health, what other points of reference have to say about mental health. But don't forget that you do not conform to the ways of this world. You are in it, but you do not conform to the ways of this world. And that becomes quite important in setting you apart for doing great work. Thank you so much. Thank you.